Hello, good afternoon. It's Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets on the 1st of March 2016. Uh, this video will be brought to you by CFDs.com. Be sure to visit www.cfds.com for your trading needs and uh, certainly qualify for that healthy cash opening offer. Alternatively, you can uh, certainly visit the educational site www.cfds.education to certainly learn more. Okay, now in terms of the uh, actual markets themselves, let's see exactly how. Uh, we are faring now the asian market certainly moved higher overnight although the nikkei was more or less flat the shanghai was up 1.7 percent uh, now that was on the back of weak chinese data uh, the economic data overnight in china certainly was exceptionally weak uh, now the non-manufacturing pmi the cakes in and the pmi certainly all came in below expectations uh, and uh, certainly uh, failed to uh, impress although that was uh, interpreted as being bullish whether that the expectations are for you know, more stimulus, et cetera, et cetera. And we did get a Chinese rate cut throughout the day, so that's certainly cushioned the blow. Now, the question is this. Um, now, yes, for China, it may well be bullish because they may expect more stimulus, et cetera. But from the uh, European market's perspective, they need to export. And if their exports, obviously, uh, uh, have, if they don't have a market to export to, i.e. China, specifically Germany, then that certainly remains bearish, given the fact that European markets are exceptionally weak. Now, that was followed by the um, the EU PMIs. Now, the uh, German, uh, Italian, and the French, and the European all came out uh, weaker than expected. Uh, some hitting 12-month lows, some hitting 24-month lows, some hitting 34-month lows. So, they all certainly came out negative. Even the UK PMI certainly came out 50.8, which expectations was 52.2. The unemployment rate uh, in the Eurozone certainly came out slightly better than expected, though. Okay, now we've got CAD, um, Canadian uh, GDP coming up, US Red Book and US PMI, ISM, manufacturing PMI, construction spending, etc. So there's a barrage of economic data to be released there. Okay, now from my perspective, Asian markets, yes, they bounced, um, but the uh, fears of a Brexit certainly uh, counteract that. And also we have concerns with regards to Greece. Now the latest uh, issue, latest uh, perspective on Greece uh, creditors said to face impasse over terms of bailout IMF EU said to disagree on scope of Greece's required reforms so certainly uncertainty there as well but yet we have the FTSE 100 uh, impressively uh, that as well currently uh, testing that 6140 zone that key diagonal trend line so this remains the the key resistance the daily chart we can see we've uh, we're testing that key horizontal 6120 it's not whether or not it's above that is whether or not it can sustain above that Okay, and whether it can close above that 6120 zone. That's the important aspect here, okay, in terms of the uh, the FTSE 100. Now, we do have horizontal resistance historically at this uh, 6160 zone, so certainly there is a key resistance just above. Uh, but I am expecting this uh, 6120 certainly to hold, okay, uh, even though it certainly seems like the QE trade is in full swing as we speak. It's certainly interesting to see, given the Brexit concerns that we've had, given the weak economic data of China. Oh, the EU and out of the uh, UK this morning, the FTSE 100 still remains afloat, very, very impressively. Now, also moving on to the price of oil as well, given the fact that uh, we are now currently holding that $34 resistance, still into that resistance zone. Now, given the weaker economic data globally, also given the fact that Barclays was limited down almost 10%, given the fact that we had uh, negative news with regards to... Uh, Ashted, uh, we had negative new news with regards to uh, Valiant as well, with regards to Scandal Overnight. With regards to Scandal Overnight, okay, and obviously say, uh, retail sales in Sweden as well, certainly hurting. Now on the, bo on the bullish side, we've had uh, Direct Line, Greg's, Fresnillo, certainly higher uh, to that extent. We've had the Australian Index, certainly higher as well. Uh, Mr. Liu, Treasury Secretary, just stated that the, uh, the Chinese, they intend not to... Uh, uh, do any further devaluation as well so that certainly is a factor uh, in terms of uh, the economic data really it's all about Chinese rate cut and obviously uh, inflation uh, being weak in the eurozone and that's signaling more QE that certainly seems to be the, uh, the the theme in this market at present now whether or not the US markets can destroy that given the fact that they were exceptionally weak and weaker into the close yesterday now if I bring up the S&P 500 and I demonstrate to you the weakness of the US markets. Bring up the NASDAQ first of all. So if I go to the 10 minute chart, you can see the NASDAQ finished at 4200. We're currently trading at the 4230 zone. So it should be interesting to see how the NASDAQ reacts. Okay. And now 
uh, in terms of the s p 500 uh, we're currently trading at 1947 zone and the pivot high was 1960 so again it should be interesting to see how the, the s p 500 reacts okay let's bring up the chart of the euro euro stocks okay now the euro stocks on the daily chart we did have this uh, inverted head and shoulders formation but we are now into previous support equals resistance on the euro stocks okay the daily chart 60 minute obviously we are in unknown waters at the moment uh, in a zone where you have previous support equals resistance now again this will be interesting to see if this holds if this fails to hold then you are looking at 3050 the next stop on the euro stocks okay Bring up the chart, the German DAX, a very impressive thrust as you can see here, we've pushed higher, we've broken out of all these gap levels, broke out, broke by past this key uh, gap fill resistance as well. So certainly a very impressive move this morning, a very, very impressive move on the German DAX. Now going over to the 60 minute chart, the German DAX, you can see that we are now uh, just above that key resistance zone. The next resistance zone more than likely will be 9760. Um, given the fact that uh, <clears throat> the economic data has, hasn't been exceptionally uh, positive given out of the Eurozone, it's going to be very hard to see the uh, the German DAX continuing onto that zone. And the daily chart is clearly into diagonal trend line resistance, so that's the resistance that I expect to hold given the weaker EU data. The French CAC is actually uh, into gap fill resistance. Now, if we the daily chart, you can see that we are into gap fill resistance on the French CAC on the daily chart, and therefore looking to potentially move lower. Clearly, see it on the 60 minute chart, the 10 minute chart is certainly showing uh, resistance now and we are looking to potentially move lower on the French CAC, okay? That's certainly a, a zone that we are potentially looking at on the downside will be this area here, which is around the 4340 uh, zone, okay? Now, in terms of the FTSE 100, again, like I said, we are into this zone at 46120 and obviously you got 6160 on the daily chart. 60 minutes, uh, we had this rising um, contracting wedge type pattern and we are looking for that to potentially hold and then start to break down. So for now, keep an eye on this zone here. Okay, so just connect that pivot high together. And you can certainly see that the market is in this rising contracting wedge pattern, looking to potentially break down. Okay, on the FTSE 100, given the weak construction data and also the weak Chinese data are overnight. That certainly seems to be the main focus. Now, it has been helped by the LSE bid. Uh, by ICE uh, certainly uh, intervening and that certainly has artificially inflated the FTSE 100 but given the Brexit fears, given the weak economic data that came out today, given the weak Chinese data out overnight and the weak US market of uh, 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 last night as well, given the fact that you had crude oil uh, or you have crude oil into resistance as well, it basically means that we are looking to potentially move low. Okay, so that's a wrap in terms of uh, European markets as such, okay. It will depend highly on the US markets and how they react, given the fact that the weakness certainly was prevalent and uh, yesterday we are expecting that today. Okay, now let me just bring up the financials quickly as well. You do have an inverted head and shoulders formation of the financials, although you are now into previous support equals resistance. So certainly a, a, a roadblock there in terms of any f movement higher. In terms of the oil and gas sector, I can bring up the European energy sector. You can, you can certainly see that we are pushing higher here, uh, but we are into horizontal resistance and then we have resistance above as well. So there are two zones that we were looking at very carefully. Also with regards to USD JPY, still struggling at the 113 level. Okay, bear that in mind. Uh, the Euro uh, USD is certainly potentially into support as well. If I bring up the chart, the Euro USD, you can see that we built a base, we haven't made a new low, and therefore you are looking at the Euro to move higher, and that obviously will in turn send European uh, equities lower. So, so that's certainly some food for thought as well. Okay, be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs. And I'll uh, obviously provide a, a further video for end of day and the US market analysis uh, later on. Goodbye now.